Mr. Murr, um, can you tell me which of the articles of impeachment are actually violations of the law? So I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to first point to the memorandum that we distributed, our committee distributed to members yesterday, both electronically and in paper format. As you may be aware, while our Texas Constitution uh, finds a lot of similarity with the United States Constitution, the Texas Constitution is absent uh, when we talk about whether or not it includes a list of impeachable offenses. So I think I'm going to, straight to your question to say there is no requirement under the Texas Constitution that an impeachable offense be a violation of criminal law. And I want to speak to that just a little bit. Um, importantly, this body in a report that was provided previously uh, in, in, in regards to the impeachment that's been discussed in 1975 of a district judge said that undermining the integrity of office, disregard of constitutional duties and oath of office, the irrigation of power, the abuse of governmental process, and the adverse impact on the system of government are in effect impeachable offenses. And they reviewed the American law on impeachments. And they finally concluded that while it's in relation to criminal law, impeachment is designed to cope with both the inadequacy of criminal standards, that means we may or may not have a criminal law in place for it, and the inability of our court system to deal with the conduct of great public figures. I understand that, what you just said, but I don't believe you understand my question. My question was simply, which of the articles of impeachment or violations of the law. I'm not saying that they have to be or they don't have to be. I'm just asking, are there? And if there are any that are violations of the law, would you please point me to them? I am retrieving a copy of my resolution, so. Okay. Please give me a moment. Article one, protection of a charitable organization. That is a violation of duties of this office. Article two, abuse of opinion process. Presumably that would be a misuse of the government code and the, the power and process for issuing written opinions. Artic Article three, abuse of open records process that's set out in chapter 552 of the government code. We've cited that in article three. Article four, misuse of official information. We again cite chapter 552 of the government code. Article five, disregard an official duty. We talked about the violation of laws governing the appointment of prosecuting attorneys pro tem. There is a specific process in place in which an attorney pro tem can be involved. And Mr. Spiller did a really good job of explaining that to the body that said, that really only occurs whenever the local prosecutor recuses themselves from a case or makes a request for additional assistance uh, because their office doesn't have the necessary staff or skill set to prosecute a case. And so the AG's office does. As you heard, the AG's office has over 800 experienced criminal prosecutors that help in that mo those matters. So that process didn't unfold according to what we've set out in law. Article six, relating to the termination of whistleblowers, clearly against the law. Article seven, regarding whistleblower investigation and report. We talked about the fact that um, whistleblower compa complaints were made and public resources were misused. Article eight, regarding the settlement agreement. Um, the allegations there are that it was staying the, the termination in, in effect forever uh, if no settlement funds were, were paid. Uh, Article 9 relates and 10 relate to constitutional bribery, and that is found in the Constitution. Article 11 relates to obstruction of justice, as said by its title. It references violations of the Securities Act, which is Title 12 of the Government Code. Article 12 refers to obstruction of justice regarding uh, protracted delay in criminal cases, and that's an abuse of judicial process. When we talk about articles 13 and 14 and 15, that has to do with false statements, typically false statements 
uh, are, are made because those statements are required by law. Article 16, conspiracy and attempted conspiracy. We do have penal code provisions relating to both of those charges. Misappropriation of public resources. If one causes employees of your office to perform services for your benefit, that can be a violation of law. Dereliction of duty, alleges violations of the Texas Constitution, oaths of office, statutes, and public policy for public officials. So based on the evidence and the information we provided, we think the conduct does that. Before Article your time, well, it, before maybe your the time last expires, two, I've had to go through all of them, so let me get the last two, sir. Right. Article 19 speaks of the unfitness for office. Uh, you will read treatises that deal with impeachment because it's not occurrence that's common, so we all will look to what the American model is, and that's been studied both in 1917, that's been studied in 1975, and we've seen that how other states treat that. Right. So that and abuse of the public trust at the end uh, don't necessarily violate what we might say is law or the penal code, but they do violate uh, what was set forth in the Texas Constitution, and which finally, doesn't require a threshold for an impeachment. Right, and finally, have you referred those violations of the law to any law enforcement? The expectation is the committee in due course always does that, so. But, but you haven't done that at this point. Have not done that yet. Okay. Still have subpoenas out, sir. All right, thank you. The gentleman's time has expired.